Hello everyone, my name is Astrofay and welcome to the Terraria Beginner's Guide. Today, we're going to go over everything that you need to know when starting a new world. As you can see, right now I'm using my axe to cut down a few trees. This is always the first thing that you want to do when starting a new world, as shelter is necessary to survive your first night. Now that we've gathered some wood, it's time to clear out an area to begin construction on our first house. When you're building a new house, you always want to make sure that you have space for a door. It takes up a 3x1 area and you need to have a block on both the top and bottom. Right now I'm just building a simple box out of the wood that we gathered earlier. And now I'm adding space for a second door on the other side of the house. Whenever you cut down a tree, it's always important to put an acorn back where the tree once grew. That way you never run out of wood. If you need to know how far there's space, just hold down control and place them where the yellow boxes are. I just turned some of that wood that we crafted into a workbench, which is necessary to craft many of the items in the game. I also made some torches out of wood and gel that we got from killing the slimes. This will help us light up our house. I'm also making some doors and furniture such as tables and chairs to make our house feel more like a home. Now that the skeleton of our house is done, it's time to start exploring a little bit. I decide to go right, but you can really go any way that you want. Also, if you see any flowers or mushrooms on the ground, those are always good to take as they come in handy later. Would you look at that? We already found our first cave. You can press and hold shift in order to hold torches in your hand. We also already found a wooden chest underground, which definitely is going to have some items that will help us on our adventure. We also found what looks to be a living tree. These trees can contain a chest that has some good loot for us, especially early in the game. I'm using some platforms right now to bridge over to it. Finding climbing claws was extremely lucky as they will help us greatly. I decided to go down even more to check if there's any more chests down here. And would you look at that? It's also a good idea to break these pots underground, as they can give you potions, torches, and ropes, which will all be extremely helpful. Here I'm mining some iron ore that I found underground. I also like to take the chests that I find underground so I don't have to craft them later. In this chest we found an aglet which is super important as we'll be needing it to craft some good equipment later on. As you go further and further underground, there's a chance that you'll stumble upon these ruined houses, which contain golden chests that have some very good loot. This one held Hermes boots, which allows me to sprint. Some ruined houses contain chandeliers, which you can break and place again to save on torches. This one held a magic mirror, which is extremely useful as it lets me return home whenever I want. While I'm here gathering iron, I also decide to get some stone. I need it in order to complete the floor of my house and to craft a furnace. In order to use a magic mirror, select it in your hotbar and just press left click. Now it's time to do some basic furnishing for the home. I place down the two doors and some light, I craft a furnace and an anvil, and make some stone bricks in order to add a nice floor. 
complete the house, you need to craft some walls and fill up the entire backdrop of the house with them. To do this, I recommend holding down control and left click as it makes it so much easier and faster. I didn't have enough stone for the flooring, so I had to go out to the nearby cave and grab some more. And with that, the main structure of our house is done. Here, I'm dividing the house in half using platforms in order to get other NPCs to move in. I'll explain the mechanics of NPCs later, but right now all you need to know is that dividing the house in half with platforms creates a second room. Now I'm making a table and some chairs in order to furnish the rest of the home so that other NPCs would want to live here. You can designate a room to belong to a specific NPC by clicking the house icon in your inventory and then the banner that has their face on it. Now it's time to upgrade our weapons for the first time. I'm replacing a copper short sword with a wooden sword, which ends up doing much more damage. I throw the copper short sword in the trash slot because we won't be needing it later. I also upgrade our pickaxe to iron, which will help us mine blocks much faster. I think it's time now to explain how the prefix system works in this game. When you craft an item, there's a chance for it to have a prefix in front of it, such as legendary, light, or terrible, like the one that I got on a pickaxe. Now there's much more than the ones that I just listed here. It's also important to mention that they have a huge impact on the effectiveness of a particular tool or weapon. I decided to go mining again, and I found another abandoned house in the same spot. This is an extremely lucky and rare find, so don't expect to get this lucky in your own worlds. I took a lot of damage fighting this slime, so you can press H to use any of the heal potions in your inventory. You can also drag them out like I did and then click up from there. This chest has a cloud in the bottle which allows me to double jump. Here I decide to use some ropes to climb up onto the top of this platform. Slimes can't go underwater, so if you're having trouble dealing with one like I did here, you can simply just build a wall and block it off. Now this here is a dead man's chest. If you open this chest, you will die. It is a guarantee. There is nothing that can be done to save you. I can tell because there are boulders above it, multiple dart traps, and even explosives below it that will all go off the second that I open this chest. However, I also find some gold under it which I decide to mine. Now you can see all the traps that are connected to this. Now I'm sure you guys want to see me open it, so here you go. Like I said, instant death. When you die, you'll drop half of the money that you have in your inventory, but it does get rounded up. So if you have one gold coin, you will drop that one gold coin. Alright, I've gone back to pick up my money, and now let's see what's inside of the chest. I also spot some topaz underground, which is going to become helpful later on.
This chest had some shoe spikes in it, which can be combined with the climbing claws that we found earlier to create tiger climbing gear. However, we can't do this just yet. Terraria currently has 44 different crafting stations, which are all used to make different items. And we don't have access to the ones that we need to combine equipment just yet. about to see here is me dying due to a series of unfortunate events. First, I got knocked off of my rope by a cave bat. Then, as I was fighting a skeleton, I accidentally dropped my sword, and so I had no weapon. Then I got cornered against a cliff that I could not get down. Now I'm putting down some of the chests that I got so I have a way to store my items. I also smelt down the ores that we got while we were mining. Our first NPC, the merchant, has finally arrived. We can use him to buy and sell different goods including healing potions, arrows, and torches. I also craft an iron bow and upgrade our wooden sword to a golden one. Now it's time to organize my chests. I'm speeding this up a lot because I doubt you guys really want to see this. When I organize my chests, they're usually broken into the categories of blocks, miscellaneous, valuables, equipment, weapons, and agriculture slash potion. I buy a piggy bank from the merchant, which is going to allow us to store our money in a safe place. Also, notice how he's selling a forest pylon. Those will be very helpful later for travel. After depositing all my money in the piggy bank, it's time to go back to where I died and get all my money back. Alright, we're almost back to where I died. I just need to place some ropes so we can safely descend down to where my money's hiding. Alright, I found my money, and there's also some other stuff in the cave that's waiting for me. These are life crystals. They increase your maximum health by 20. For the average Terraria player, these are absolutely necessary in order to complete the game. Again, finding four right next to each other is incredibly rare and you're likely to not encounter this in your own world. You can use 10 rope to craft a rope coil, which allows you to throw it in case you can't reach. abandoned house, but this one is underwater, so we need to be careful to not run out of air while we're exploring it. This chest has shoe spikes with a lucky modifier on it. Lucky increases your critical strike chance by 4% which I personally believe is better than having extra defense at this point in the game. Terraria uses a mechanic known as random crits, meaning that every attack has a chance to be a critical strike, which will double its damage. Now that we've returned home, I'm going to do a little bit of work to expand our storage area. at about this point in time that I realized that I completely forgot about armor. Your first armor set will likely be made out of wood. 
it will give you three defense, which is a nice boost for survivability early in the game. To craft a whole set, you need exactly 85 wood. stat in Terraria. The way that it works is that incoming damage is reduced by half of the armor value. For example, if you see that the shield in the bottom right of my screen says 10 in it, that means that I have 10 defense or armor points. If a zombie were to hit me for, let's say, 15 base damage, it would be reduced by half of the armor value, which would end up being 5, so the zombie would only end up doing 10 damage to me. In higher difficulty modes, armor ends up being more effective because monsters do more damage to you. In expert mode and master mode, armor reduces incoming damage by 75 and 100% of the armor's value respectively. Right now, I just want to explore the world a little bit and see what each side of the world has to offer. We found another living tree on the right hand side, meaning we have two in total now. This chest here had some more climbing claws, while this one right here had a living wood wand and living leaf wand. These are especially useful for building. The living loom that we picked up here is also useful for crafting items out of living wood. On the right side of the world, it looks like we found a desert biome. This actually tells me a lot about how the world has generated. The jungle biome always spawns on the same side as the first desert biome, which would be the right side in this case. Also, the frozen tundra biome and a structure called the dungeon generate on the opposite side as the first desert. That right there was the entrance to the underground desert. Also, we're coming up on the oasis biome, which is going to be useful for fishing later on. We've reached the end of the desert biome, and this is as far as I want to go on this side for today. Now that we're home, it's time to explore what's on the left side of the world. As I explore further to the left, I soon hit a roadblock. This biome is known as a crimson. It contains some of the toughest monsters in this game. It is not somewhere that a new player wants to be. However, if you can sneak in early and grab a bit of wood, that'll be very helpful for you at the start of your journey. The wood that drops from crimson trees, known as shade wood, is more effective than regular wood. It gives you more defense and its weapons do more damage. However, since this is a very difficult biome, you're likely to get swarmed very quickly. If you ever feel like there's too many enemies for you to handle, just go home. Now it's time to store what we got from exploring. You can use a quick stack button in your inventory under the ammo slot in order to quickly store your items in nearby chests. It's also time for me to craft a little bit of shadewood armor. Unfortunately, I didn't grab enough for a full set, but this much will do. Also, if you have any excessive items that you don't believe that you'll be needing anytime soon, you can sell them to the merchant for some easy money. However, don't sell everything, as you will probably need it at some point during your journey. If you intend on playing a class that uses mana, such as Mage or Summoner, crafting mana crystals are very important. You can use them the same way that you would use a life crystal. It's also worth bringing up NPC happiness. Every single NPC has their preference for which biome they like to live in and which people they like to live next to. For example, the merchant likes to live in the forest. The happier the NPCs are, the lower that their prices will be. And that's it for the first episode of the Terraria Beginner's Guide. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions that you want me to address for the next episode, let me know down in the comments. Thanks again, and I'll make sure to see you in the next episode of the Terraria Beginner's Guide.